Welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today I am preparing for, that's it, Halloween. How did you guess? Oh my gosh, you're so clever. You must be psychic. Can you read my mind? Oh, anyway. <laughs> so this little dude I bought in the sales after Halloween last year, uh, thinking, oh, I can paint him for next year. So Luckily, I actually remembered I had him there on the shelf, and uh, I've taken his handle off. He actually, it's uh, got a hole as if something was on the top, but that was missing. And um, But I've plugged the hole up with a bit of blue tack so that we don't lose all the paint down there. And I've also covered up the holes that the handle go in, goes into with a little bit of sticky tape just so that we don't lose the paint in the process of trying to get it to run down the sides. So I'm going to put all that back together um, in the hope that uh, it's actually really quite a hard lid and I'm slightly concerned I'm not going to be able to get it off once it's painted but that's okay. Um, all it's probably going to do is sit at the front gate anyway. We don't really do much Halloween here in New Zealand. There's a few kids that get out there in costume and I always have a few little bits and pieces available, but certainly nothing like America does. I'm not sure about Europe, whether you guys do much for Halloween, but uh, it's nowhere near what they do in America over here. So, the other thing I've done to prepare it is I've wiped it down with alcohol. Just to get any grease off it. Uh, the paint's not going to be permanent. It's not going to stick. Although, I say that. And, <laughs> if you remember, last year, I did this little fellow. And... Uh, if I remember, I'll put a link to this video in the description. And the pumpkin I did last year was a real pumpkin. And I did it turquoise for the non-lolly brigade. Um, but yeah, this was my dude that I hung up to scare the children. <laughs> it worked. No one came asking for lollies last year. It was quite funny. And <laughs> How does it get any better than that? So... This year I thought I'm going to do it reasonably, um, what's that word? Normal. <laughs> You're like, Michelle, come on. Not you? Normal? Really? Not likely. I know, I know, but hey, what magic can I create? So I'm just going to use three colours. I'm going to use gold. And this is the Montmartre pre-mix pouring stuff. So I'm going to use that one for getting any cells, if we're going to get any. I've got some Vermilion Orange. And I've got some Payne's Grey. Which is almost black, but it's kind of got a blue tinge. And it's quite fun. And I like it. And so I'm using it. So... I never really know what to do when it comes to 3D objects. I've done a lot of 3D objects and I probably should make a playlist of 3D objects. Um, but I, I've got them on my Lazy Susan and I'm just going to pour it and spin and pour and spin and pour and spin and hope that it works. Um, he is really quite smooth. I'm not sure how well it's going to work. But for me, that's part of the fun. So, I'm going to put... What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Help! I'm going to put a little bit of the Payne's Grey in the bottom. Just to create a bottom, if you know what I mean. Now... This Montmartre is, as I say, it comes pre-mixed. Um, they have not sent it to me. This is not a promotion for this stuff. Bought it with my own money. Um, 
and I've done a few videos using it and I recommend you go back and check it out they do it does really cool cloud effect but like you see some people doing the um, just a little bit more black Pain's grey um, you see a lot of people doing adding the enamel acrylic and that gives that cloud effect well that is what I found that this Montmartre pouring medium tends to do so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start off by pouring some of this on it and then come back and do that just to give it just to get some black just to get some paint on just to get something happening <laughs> let's see now when you've got 3d objects like this they start to uh oh no they start to find their own pathway and the paint disappears off down a little gully and does not do what you want it to do which is to cover the whole thing which is why I'm doing this to start with. Let's pick up the runoff, paint it on, and get rid of all those dry patches. If you've done any fluid art, you'll know that as you tip your paint around, it runs faster if there's already paint there. It runs more evenly if there's already paint there. And... Look at this, it's beading, not excited about beading, that tells me that there's something happening that I don't want to happen, so let's get a bit more bulk happening over those areas. I found if you can get the bulk to stay, you get a much better base. If you're just putting a nice little thin wipe with your finger, it doesn't necessarily create that coverage required to not have the bulk. And also, hey, it might be something to do with some oil on my skin. Who knows? What else have we got? But, you know, the cool thing is I'm painting this with orange. And if anything bleeds through from the plastic, it's orange too. So, oh well. There we go. I just heard someone say, but you haven't done the top. Yeah, that'll get done last so that I've got something to stick my finger on. I'm slipping. Slipping off my tin. It's rather a rounded base. It's quite not easeful. Put it that way. E. Anyway, we've got a start, and now we can start playing with the colours. Don't pour paint over your fingers where you've cut yourself doing DIY. Right, let's pour. I'm just going to bend my tin. This is a little tuna tin. Um, I use a edge cut um can opener 
and what that does is it leaves me a nice smooth safe edge and also a little lid that I can use if I need to and I can reuse them over and over again it makes me a lot happier than if I was using plastic all the time I didn't spin for you, sorry. I just went round and round the top. But I tell you what, I think I might be dipping into that. Well, it's looking pretty cool. I'm liking it. And here comes the orange off the top, just slowly dripping down. Getting some of those plastic exposure spots on that lid. Oh, lots of gold. Let's just zoom you in and show you what the gold is doing onto the Payne's Grey. That's that little effect I was talking about. I like it. And I'm really liking what's happening down on the ground. <laughs> okay. So. What's required now? One thing is to zoom you back out again so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to torch it. Now with the... With the Montmartre, I haven't found that torching it actually makes a big deal of difference with what happens, but I am seeing some air bubbles. And I don't really want air bubbles with that patch, it's cool. Right, well that was fun, easy, and check out that ground, oh, talk about, get a girl excited, what do you reckon, are you excited, I am, and I'm a girl, so there we go, got a girl excited, woohoo! Any blokes out there that are looking for ways to get a girl excited? Pour paint and make it drip on the ground like that. How does it get any better? I should have poured that on top of something. I'm so frustratedly annoyed with myself for not doing that. Imagine if I had a canvas under there. I could just leave it. It would just be delicious. <sighs> But I didn't. So, what's next? What's next, Buttercup? Oh, 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 you know what I should have done? I should have put a screw or something in there so I could just pick it up, move it. That lid is so stuck on tight it would not have fallen off. And if you're new to my channel and you're just Checking me out for the first time. Yes, I am this weird. Yes, I have this much fun. And if that's a problem for you, go find another site to uh, channel to watch. Because <laughs> I love having fun. And 
I know that there's a lot of people out there that enjoy me enjoying my painting. So um, that's what my channel is all about. Sharing my love. All right. So I want to move that so I can get in to here and dip cabochons. Just bear with me a moment and I'm going to work out a way to move our lovely piece of art. Okay, so that was easier than I thought. I did exactly what I described. I found a screw. I screwed it down into that top hole and carried it away. It was super easy. How does it get any better than that? <sighs> when you ask a question and you're willing to receive the awareness, it's amazing what can show up. Now, I am really, really, really loving some of these ones through here these are fun these are intense and i am going to get to them um but the first one i'm going to go in for i'm actually going to move this and hope that it doesn't screw anything up um is this one in here Now this is vermilion orange and it's looking a little bit red on my camera. I'm not sure how red it's going to come out on your computer screen. But I'm going in for this bit here and I'm going to go in that way. Now I'll put a link in the description to my amazon shop which is affiliate links but i've got a whole section in that shop of cabochons um and there's also a video down in the description about how to do these and how to glue them into stuff so please 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 check that i really like that that's cool let's pop that down over there let it dry and see what happened underneath look at that where I pulled up for it, it is <laughs> looks like my dancing fairy. Do you remember me doing a dancing fairy painting? I'm gonna go back in and do another one in exactly the same spot and see how well that comes out. But we're gonna go that way this time. There she is, my dancing fairy with a big nose. Huh. Come on. There it is. I like it. Okay. <laughs> ah, I could keep going on that spot, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go over to this one here and grab a rectangle. Can you tell? My new order came in. Oh, so happy. Got home today and there's this box on the front doorstep. Oh, yay! How's that? like I like I like I'm so happy and look what that paint is doing down there <laughs> that's so funny should we do another one should we capture that too you know what it looks like it look to me anyway because I've got a weird sense of imagination maybe not so far much from that angle but it looks like a um, prawn crawling along <laughs> with a silly grin on its face. Anyway, <laughs> I think I have to capture my prawn. Um, he's so cool. I think he needs to be on a square though, and I don't have any squares. That's really upsetting. 
Let's go another rectangle then. Mount it sideways somehow. Oh, the other thing that arrived today was my UV resin, which I'm going to have a play with um, for sealing the back of these. What? Oh, I could be here all day, guys. Check out that. that... <sighs> How does it get any better? I'm in heaven. Playing with my paints. I'm in heaven. I'm going to do a round one, though. Two rectangles, two ovals. Oh, pulled that out of my bag. I've obviously had dirty fingers in that bag before. Wipe paint all over that. <sighs> the joy of an artist. Dirty fingers equals everything messed up. I'm really liking that. so pretty gold and orange and black always a yummy combination <sighs> now what did I see just before oh I'm gonna use um, one of my long my long skinny rectangles not the one I've just been using. Um, where are we? One of these. Just got to clean it up. You've always got to make sure that the flat side that you stick in the paint is nice and clean because you can't clean it once the paint is on there. And what I would like to capture is. Down there. Just like that. It's so hard. You know, this hand painting beautiful cabochons. Mm hmm. Definitely interesting. Not quite what I'd expected, but that's okay. What else? What else? What else? Oh, there's so much paint there. I can't just leave it. What can I do with it? Oh, I know what I can do with it. All right, cabochons away. Next genre. Okay, I'm gonna zoom you back out again so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got this cardboard and this is um, from the inside of a cereal packet. Recycling again guys. And I'm gonna, oh hold on. If you're going to do this, you've got to put them on a baking tray so that your cardboard doesn't stick. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's what that Montmart did. It made those little cells. That's cool. Anyway. Put that over there. Preferably where it's not going to fall off. 
or put paint on anything else. <laughs> uh, let's actually put it on its base and then it'll be able to sit properly. So now we have some of that fantasticness on card. And it's looking rather Asian kind of thing. One of the things what what one of the things I do with these cards is literally chop them up and make them into greeting cards. And so when there's a really pretty part, you need to try and make it vaguely rectangular <laughs> so that you can cut it out. See, so that piece there is now big enough to be a card. That looks a bit scary. <laughs> but we'll see what shows up. So we have done a pumpkin. One, two, three, four, five, six cabochons and a really pretty card. And what else is possible? I've had fun with it. I hope you've had fun with it. And I'll be back to show you the dry results in three, two, one. Ta-da! It's dry. See, there's the screw I put in the top. <laughs> um, it has peeled away from the plastic. Check that out. There's just a few spots, and I think that is actually, by the looks of the way that it's done it, it may be where some silicon... Did I put silicon in this? I don't think I did. Maybe... Hmm. Anyway, it's it has pulled away, but as I said, the undercolour is totally similar to what we had to start with, so it's no big deal. Uh... And all I need to do, other than put the handle on, is just redefine his face. Uh, which is a bit sad, really, because I really quite like the way this is dribbled through here. Uh, but that's okay. We'll just ignore that. Because it's supposed to be a pumpkin for Halloween. Now... A lot of people just put black back in there and this came with black but to me a Halloween pumpkin is supposed to have a light inside so you wouldn't have dark in there you'd have light so I'm just gonna use a bit of the same orange and bring that back up And then it's not too in your face, it keeps it happy, not creepy. You know what? So many people think that Halloween should be creepy. Halloween was the celebration originally of um, the night where the gap between the spirit world and the physical realm were was the smallest. Now where does that go? Um, so more likely for spirits to come through. And if you make that spooky and scary, then people are going to find that think that spirits are spooky and scary, but they don't have to be. So many people have awareness of entities. Um, because they judge it as spooky and scary, they don't get that the awareness they're having, which is kind and caring and nice, and 
is that. <laughs> How does it get any better? My favorite book about, um, well, I've got two favorite books about entities. One's an adult read and one's a kid's read. Um, the adult read is Talk to the Entities by Shannon O'Hara. She's an amazing, amazing facilitator of consciousness. Um, and the other one is Things That Go Bump in the Night by Simone Perdue. Both of them are uh, on Amazon, I think. If you go to my Amazon shop, there's a Access Consciousness Books link playlist, shop list, whatever you want to call it, and um, they're in there. Great books, both of them. Anyway, there we go, just sort of brought though that back up into, into being again. Nothing too dynamic, too scary, just is. One of the things I love about this is how the, much the gold is sitting on the top. It has stayed up, which is very exciting. How many of us have used golds in the past that just seem to disappear? They just sink. And this Montmartre gold on with the Reeves paint seems to stay up which is quite exciting. So there you go. Let's put his little handle back on. Maybe in you go. One. Two. And there he is. I'm happy with him. He'll look good on my front deck. And uh, how does it get any better than that? Well, how it does is by looking at these cabochons. Oh my God. Let's move this out of there. See, this is what I mean by the gold sits on the top. Wicked, eh? Huh. Anyway. Let's have a look. I can't remember which order I did these in. So I'm just going to... Look at the gold in that. It almost looks like a lady's silhouette with a weird hat. <laughs> but the other side of this one's really cool too. Look at that. I think that's really funky, so... I am going to be playing with my UV resin over the next day or so to see how well that works. Might help if the sun came out. Um, the back of this one's cool as well. Check it. Yummy. Because these ones I think would look much better mounted in a way that could be worn either way. How much that gold shimmers. Just so pretty. Hold on a second. That to me looks like a unicorn face with its unicorn horn, big weird ears and its neck. Ah, uh, that's funny. Because that way around, it reminds me of that um, fire fairy that I painted a while ago. How does it get any better? This one's dramatic. Dun, dun, dun. It, I like it. The other side's not quite so exciting, but almost looks like a... Um, spirit or a, 
angel or something. But I like that. That's cool. Which way around? That way? Maybe. The round one is pretty too. Look at this. I just love the way that that gold is interact with the orange and it just makes such a pretty, 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 pretty. And a long skinny one. I actually like the back best, which is funny. And last but not least is the card that we did with the leftovers. That is going to make an amazing, amazing card. Look at it. It's just so pretty. Wow. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. How does it get any better than that? Anyway, any who, any how. I've had fun painting our little Mr. Man over there. I hope you've had fun playing with me and what else is possible guys? How much more fun can we have in the future? Come play with me by subscribing. Um, make sure that you know about upcoming live streams by signing up to my email list 24 hours notice of when that's coming up and also if you want to be chatting in my ear about how to do it on those live streams or you'd like to do an individual painting with me uh, jump over to patreon patreon.com forward slash mickey art and um see what options are there i would love to have you come play love to have you join me and um what else is possible guys how much more fun can we have i've got actually got a individual patreon uh, painting coming up soon i've just finished playing with kathy on that and uh so we'll wait for it to dry and show you what fun we had and I just love the painting that we created together. It's just so much fun. So easy. So yummy. So pretty. Ah, and uh, yeah, had lots of fun creating in Mirror Lab. If you haven't um, played with Mirror Lab yet, then check out the link, the uh, video that I have on my channel. Just click on Mickey Art below and then search in the videos for mirror lab to see what i'm talking about anyway i adore you guys i had so much fun playing with this dude and i look forward to playing with you again super super soon and what else is possible check out the videos here um the past videos there's a whole playlist of them um you can subscribe to my channel and also if you're interested in supporting me through Patreon or PayPal, the links are in the description.